To ride for Prince Carlo was really easy because he had lots of trainers. Barry Hills, Guy Howard, you know, um, Andre Fab yeah. in France. And I, I was retained worldwide. Yeah. Um, and luckily, I had a lot of good horses to ride as well. Yeah. You know? Um, would, would, how involved, because we know, obviously, these days he has the good Lord, Lord Grimthorpe, keeping mm -hmm. control of the whole operation. Yeah. How hands-on was Prince Carlid? Very much so. Did he bring you up at home and say? Uh, I used to speak to him quite a lot, yeah. Um, and he was very nice to chat to. He's, he's a real gentleman. Mm. Um, did, he, did he? I mean, did he take defeat well? Um, does anybody take defeat very well? So he didn't take it well. Well, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say he didn't, because I never, no. I never spoke to him after a race, right. you know. But I, I did um, had long conversation with him, off and off and on. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously a very wealthy man, um, but he loves his horses, um, and he's had a lot of success without buying. He produces them all through his breeding, through his mares, and I think Philip Mitchell, um, who is his uh, stud manager, he obviously does the breeding, mating the breeding, so he obviously does a very good job. Yeah. So we've spoken about the retainers and the, and the main employees. Mm. Were there any trainers that were more difficult to deal with? Was there, I mean, I know it's never easy to say, but yeah, was no, really, who, who was a difficult trainer to work for? Andre Fab. Well, yeah. he wasn't easy. Which is surprising because he actually prefers English and Irish people, yeah. French people as well. I wrote him a lot of winners. You know, one arcs for him and all sorts of group ones. But um, yeah, he was. Um, what way is he difficult, Pat? Just. He, yeah, he was grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, those great trainers that are there at the top, they expect so much. And if, 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 you, if they feel that you haven't ridden a good race, they really get upset. And um, To the he, extent that, what, he would be seething in the paddock afterwards? or he just No, he, 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 um, he wasn't like that. He, uh, he'd come to you quietly on his own. Right. The silent treatment was always worse. Yeah, uh, and I just had one row with him and that was it. Which, what was that over? That was over a, a horse uh, called Toulon. Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. won the ledger. Yeah, character. Yeah, and he was a bit of a monkey, that horse. And then um, I rode him at San Clue as a four-year-old um, and he wanted me to do different tactics. And um, anyway, I rode to his orders and it didn't work out. <laughs> so then he, he, he moaned at me and, and I had a row with him. Right. So then, you And know, in that kind of instance, is just this got, like a full scale slagging, shouting match? In a, in a um, well, no, he followed me into the toilet when I was having a wash and I told him to go away and things like that. You know? right. uh, I wasn't happy with him and, and um, I just got in my taxi and got back to the airport and came home. And was that the last you rode for? Perfect. No, I wrote, a, I wrote a couple of, a bit more from after that. Yeah. Reference point in the lead from Sharon I, who's sticking with him. Natru is going to get a run through on the rails if he can pick it up. Orban coming there on the very wide outside is Toto coming with a run. Triptych is travelling well in behind them. And reference point looks to be swallowed up. It's on the outside, Trompolino in the hoops comes bursting through. Panadari in the lead on Trompolino. Reference point is beaten and beaten badly. But it's Trompolino who's clear of Tony Bid in second place. Toto third. Then comes to Racer as they race up towards the line. It's Trompolino who's clear up towards the line. Panadari wins his third consecutive arc. Trompolino wins Tony Bid second. Race. I mean, he's a great trainer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's brilliant. But, um, yeah, it was just that one mishap I had with, with Andre. And, and of the other trainers... I think if I walked into to, to Paris tomorrow and met him at Longshore, you know, he'd be very polite to me. Yeah. Because he's, you know, he's a polite man. Yeah. But he, um, he's very... Uh, if his horses don't win, he... he, he yeah. I, 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 I can, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. Guy Harwood. Mm. Again, he, he has always come across to me as a bit of a character. Was he? Yeah, he was. It wasn't easy to ride, but... No? No. He was, uh, I mean, I liked him. He's a, ni uh, he's a nice man, but he, um, he had a lot of success, you know, training really good horses. And um, he trained a lot of them for, 
for Prince Carlin, but he was a really good trainer, but uh, at the time, I was never keen on him. Because right. <laughs> um, I just thought, you know, mm, all right, you're having a lot of success, but, you know. It sounds, mo it sounds slightly as if, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, it sounds like if you're saying that you felt he did well because of the horses he was given rather than what talent he had in some ways. Is that what you're sort of saying? Or well, he, he went into it big time, you know. He had his own vet, a guy called Brian Eagles, I yeah, think. Brian, yeah. 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 And um, wonderful gallops. I mean, beautiful place to train horses. His daughter is there now. Probably, yeah. mm. But, um, yeah, he, um, he wasn't easy, you know. Right. He's he's better now because he's he's me mellow. When you're saying that, Pat, are we talking now? After a race, having suffered a defeat, it was nasty, <laughs> or are you just saying in general terms, you just characters slightly clashed? I think because you know, a I was just purely riding for Prince Carlin, mm. right? Um, he had Greville as his jockey, yeah. so I don't think he. I, I, I can't say for sure, but I got the impression that he wasn't... He wanted Greville. Yeah. yeah. Which well, I, I, you know, I totally understand that, but, you know, I was riding for the owner. What about Henry Cecil? Henry was a great guy to ride for. Because he, um, his horses just used to jump off. You can make all the running all the time. They just keep going. You know, the way he trained them, it was just amazing. And a, and a character? Yeah, good, good, good character. Um, a little bit different, you know, sort of eccentric, um, but still there at the top. Yeah. Would I, he be an orders man, Henry? Would he want no, to ride? To... No, he wasn't. He wasn't an orders man. Um, I feel that um, if you went out in a race and he said something to you to to to, to say, oh, do this. Um, and, and the race didn't plan out like he he thought it would. He would probably say to you, "Well, why didn't you use your initiative?" <laughs> um, but a great trainer. And John Dunlop, who you John Dunlop was the the nicest. He uh, John Dunlop and John Knox were just real gentlemen to ride for. They were lovely people, and I rode for John for a long, long time. Dunlop. You know, even from the early days, you know, even when I was retained by Peter Warwin or uh, Abdullah, he always tried to get me for a nice horse that he was running in. It's Zara Laska with a furlong left to go. Three parts in front. Son of Sharp Shot, the big danger. It's Zara Laska from Son of Sharp Shot. They're stride for stride from Shallow Leader. Zara Laska about a head in front. Son of Sharp Shot lunging and Son of Sharp Shot. Good up to win the best bra. So those are some of the great trainers Pat rode for. But what about his rivals in the weighing room? Eddery took on the best. Champions, Willie Carson, Joe Mercer, Steve Cawthon, and more recently, Kieran Fallon and Frankie Dettori. He also came up against the long fella, Lester Piggott. I wondered what he was like. In the early days, he was quite, um, you know, very quiet. Didn't say a lot, um, but a brilliant jockey, there's no doubt about that. Horses ran for him that wouldn't run for other jockeys. Were you, were you were jockeys scared of him in the weighing room? Would you be scared walking in the weighing room in the early days with him there? I wasn't. I was never scared of him. <laughs> I mean, he was like, he was like a, a, a genius, but I, he, never, he never worried me. Um, I just make, I'll tell you a story. He, um, one day he was canting at the start, and you remember a jockey called Jeff Baxter? Yeah. So Jeff is uh, leading, uh, and he's behind him, and Jeff can't hold his horse because it's pulling really hard, and of course your man kept running up the back of him, cheating him up. So they get to the gate, then the two of them are arguing. So, you know, what are they doing? <laughs> so then they come in, they come in the weighing room, and your man says to him, apologize. Jeff Baxter, and he went, nee. Didn't apologise, so he flattened him, hit the deck. <laughs> Jeff went back out to his room. Lester gets up. He's so funny the way you know he's got a good character, and he said to his valet, "He said, why don't you help me?" <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but did he have an aura around him 
in the weighing room. I mean, but, I mean, as much his as his just... best friend was Brian Taylor. Right. Um, they were funny together, and they used to make me laugh a lot. The two of them. Um, but he, uh, yeah, he kept himself to himself all the time. He was very sort of um, quiet and didn't say a lot. So it but, would be funny but moments when you got out, than... Yeah, when you got out there hmm. in the race, he was ruthless. But he made me ruthless. In style, of course, you, you really couldn't have been more ends of the spectrum with, with Leicester's backside going like this and mm. yours going up and down like yeah. this. It was, it, I mean, did you wonder at his style? You must have looked at him and think, I wonder how he's doing that half the time. So. Well, he had this knack, you know, he had good hands, um, good balance. And what does that, we bandied that phrase, what's that mean? If you've got good hands, what does that mean? That means you can get the horse to relax really right. well, you know, switch them off. Right. Whereas some jockeys, they, they're, they hold them and they just, they're doing too much all the time. Where he's totally, he was totally different, he could get a horse to switch off. And just, and, and tactically, Leicester. And he had it. Oh, yeah, he, he rode just, you know, he's just a good... He was one of the best riders that's ever ridden around Epsom. No doubt about that. And what about his knack of stealing rides from, from other people? Well, he did that a lot in the early days. He wouldn't do it now. He wouldn't get away with it, yeah. you know, with the declarations today. But he did, yeah. He took him to Martin or Brian Gold an hour before the race, before the judgment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the best, one of the best French jockeys ever. Took him off. <laughs> An extraordinary character. And, and in a finish, when you're a young Pat Edry, is he the one you want to beat in a photo finish? Well, yeah, because he, um, he was very strong in a race. Um, you know, he, um, it was before the whip rule came out. So, you know, he could go bang, 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 bang. rat a tat tat mm. in those days, yeah. Um, and he, um, it's funny. If you watch him riding the minstrel, beating Hot Grove in the derby, you know, it looks like he gave him a, a really hard race. But that horse came out and won the King George next start and the Irish derby. Mm. People often say that about Leicester, that, you know, that he, you, he's if ferocious, you, but... Not. If you hit a horse in the right place, you're not going to hurt him. But if you hit him uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, further down past your, your, the girts and that, and the flanks, you're going to hurt them and they'll curl. The, the, the main thing, uh, what my boss, Frenchie Nicholson, taught me to do was you've got to frighten the horse. So you've got to flick him. If you hit them hard, they'll curl. But it's actually frightening in a good way rather than a bad way. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, it's getting get, getting them to run. Yeah. And if they, if they don't run when you give them a flick, put your whip down and then just ride them hands and heels and... and Hopefully they'll go for you that way. Well, there is there is an art to that. Yeah. And is that something you can learn, or is it natural? No, that that has to come natural. Yeah. Through race riding. Yeah. You've either got it or you haven't. Mm. Also, of course, in the early days, Joe Mercer involved in the great Grundy mm. Bastino. Um, as you know, that big race they claim pacemakers and things like that affected the possible result, etc. But but what was Joe like to, to ride against? Because he's a very different, well, he seems a different character to Leicester. Yeah, Joe was a very clean rider. You know, he would, um, he, um, he rode, he, he came out the gate, he stayed out, he wouldn't, he wouldn't knock you over, you know, where Leicester would. He'd take you out. <laughs> and I would as well. <laughs> um, but he was a very... So were, were you dirty in the early days, Pat, then? Well, I was crazy right. when I was a kid, yeah. So you really did take after Dad? Mm. But if you've been taught, that's what you do. Well, I was ruthless to win. Yeah. But uh, Joe was the opposite to that. He right. was, and then he was great to ride against because he was always one you could follow. Because he hit, he, he hit the front early, Joe. And he, he'd give you a lead all the way up. I mean, he had the best horse, he'd beat you. But, um, you know, if you had a tricky horse and you, you'd follow Joe, he'd take you all the way and he'd go and snap him on the line. <laughs> Such was Edery's aura in the weighing room that Frankie de Tori nicknamed him God. But of all the riders in action today, it is Frankie that Pat feels has a touch of divine intervention. He's got a lot of charisma. He's a lovely bloke. Great fun to go out with. But 
in my opinion, he's the best jockey riding at, at the moment. Right. You know, he doesn't have to work that hard. I don't think at the moment because he's got a great job. But if he did, he'd, he'd wipe these guys clean. Do you think he's naturally the, just the best? He is a natural. Lovely style, lovely way about riding horses, rides a good race. He's very smart in his brain. Right. You know. What, the pounds or? Well, I wouldn't say <laughs> he's got enough pounds, so he doesn't, I don't think that worries him. He's, yeah, right. ma he's made that now. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, great, lovely. I just like watching him ride. He's just. And he's good from the front and, the, and, and from behind, which is very like you. I mean, we always think of you, I always think of you around Windsor. Mm. Pat Edry on a front run around Windsor. You might as well just give him the race sort of thing. <laughs> as they race now down inside the final half mile of the race, Ben Tico, Pat, who took it up from the stall's opening, still out in front. Well suited's come there despite the jockey's urgings with a chance. As they come down inside the final furlong, there looks to be only one winner here, and that's Ben Tico who's streaking well clear from well suited and Santana Lady. Up towards the line, the cheers go up for Pat Edery. A great ride here on Ben Tico. He's enjoying a marvellous day, of course, had winners this afternoon, and Ben Tico's the easy winner here. Tight for second, very tight. Well suited and Santana Lady. Then dancing bow the field real Kieran Fallon. Yeah. What do you make of him? You know, I, I felt sad when Kieran all that happened to him, you know. Because um, obviously he ran into wrong people or whatever happened, but um he was flying. Things were going great for him, riding for Bally Doyle and riding great winners and um he should be there at the top, but uh, it's unfortunate that, that happened to him. Does he have, is his character, that obviously he's got skill, um, he's multiple champion jockey, but is his character one of the main things? The fact that he could ride an art winner the day before being in court, yeah. is that part of his makeup? Um, well, I think, he, I think he's a, a very laid back um, person, um, but a nice guy, would it? Do you think he's misunderstood in, in many ways? By quite people a lot don't people. realise what a nice person he is. Mm. He's a, re he's a really nice guy. Yeah. It's just unfortunate that he mixed with people, I don't know who they were or what they were, but got him in trouble and, and, and things went, didn't go right, you know? And, and in a finish as strong as... Oh, anyone? strong, yeah. I mean, he wouldn't be as stylish as Frankie Vittori, but he'd be as strong. Yeah. And we must just mention a couple of the Irish lads, of course, Michael Canan. Yeah. You know, very much of your era, recently retired. Um, I, rode, I rode a lot with Mick. Very hard jockey to beat. Great rider, <laughs> great rider. Uh, cool, um, nothing flustered him. Uh, the only thing that would fluster Mick was if somebody carved him up. And then, you know, I think he was a little bit tough in the weighing room in, 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 the, in those areas. But um, as a rider, yeah, great jockey. <laughs> And, and of, of your colleagues in the weighing room, which, which jockeys at any level used to take the mick out of Pat Edry? Who, who would come I, in and just kill I, you off? I used to have a laugh with Jason. Weaver, the shark? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What kind of things would they do? Oh, that, sorts. That you can say publicly. <laughs> All sorts of things. You take you up to anything in the weighing room when you're out there riding and they're not, they're not in the race. Like what? what, what, what? You come back in and your trousers would be all cut up to pieces and... <laughs> You know, your underpants or your socks. <laughs> There's a lot of trousers with Jason as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh. but, so they're just mad. I mean, uh, and, and who would have been the maddest jockey you'd have ridden with? This is a mad as a fruitcake. I think Dandy Nichols. Right. He was a nutter. <laughs> still is. <laughs> Poor Dandy, he still is. He's a good trainer. Yeah. He's a bloody good trainer. But yeah, he was a bit fruitcake <laughs> when he was riding.